Welcome to Computer Science 320 2014 Winter 2 Midterm 2 Practice Problem Screencasts. We are working on problem 2.4, but I've actually scrolled back up to the top, so I can point out in problem 2, what really matters is does the Master Theorem apply, and if so, what case are we in? And the very first thing we test to see if the Master Theorem applies is whether we've got something of this form. And then we can check which case we're in based on the stuff over here. There's a few other things we're checking, like last time we had to check the regularity condition that's in the root case, uh, but uh, generally speaking, this is the key stuff right here. So I'm just going to jump down to problem 4 now, and we'll have to jump back up potentially later on. So in problem four, we're dealing with t of n equal to t of 99n over 100 plus 1. So is this of the form a t of n over b, ignoring floors and ceilings, plus f of n? Well, the f of n part, that's easy, right? We've got 1 here. So we just need to work on the a t of n over b. I don't see an a, but, you know, t of 99n over 100, that's just 1 times t of 99n over 100. So our a is 1. Uh, what about b? Is this n over b? Well, we have n over 100 here, but what do we do with this 99? Well, we can easily rewrite this. This is the same as t of n over 100 divided by 99. Okay. Same thing, I'll leave the floor in there so we can see it really is the same thing. And at this point, clearly, this thing on the bottom here is our b. b's got to be bigger than 1. Is 100 divided by 99 bigger than 1? Yes, it is. It's not a whole lot bigger than 1, but it's bigger than 1. So we are going to be able to apply the master theorem. So just like everywhere else, what's the next thing we do? We find the log base b of a. Well, b is this thing that's just barely larger than 1. Uh, a is equal to 1. What is the log base? Uh, let's see, the log base 100 divided by 99 of 1. Well, it turns out the log base anything larger than 1 of 1 is just 0. So this is equal to 0. Okay, so 1.01 .01 or whatever this is raised to the 0 is 1, as is 2 to the 0 and 3 to the 0 and 4 to the 0, they're all 1. So this is just equal to 0. That's pretty handy. Uh, what about our f of n? How does it compare to n raised to some power? Well, 1, that is just equal to n to the 0, right? n to the 0 is 1. So our exponent here matches the exponent we're going to have at the leaves. And that means we're in the balanced case. You can see it if I scroll back up. In the balanced case, f of n is in theta of n to the c, plus these log factors, which are usually not going to be relevant to us, and they aren't here. Uh, in this case, what matters is c's log base b of a. Remember, that's just 0. And f of n is n to the 0. So n to the 0 is certainly an element of theta of n to the 0. It is n to the 0. So we have f of n is equal to n to 0, is an element of theta of n to the 0, which is theta of, uh, sorry, theta of n to the log base b. Okay. So that puts us in the balanced case. And that's all we need to know for the problem. Uh, you can also certainly solve this recurrence. Again, it's not very hard. We just go back up and look up what it's going to be. And it is theta of n to the c times that log factor we saw before with one more in the exponent. Since there was no log factor before, there was a 0 in the exponent. So now there will be 1, which means this will be n to the 0 times log of n. In other words, log of n. So asymptotically, this will have the same performance as, say, binary search.